On today's episode, we've got the brand new Tesla Holiday software update, a concession made on in-car gaming, Tesla submits for final approval at Giga Berlin, LFP battery production coming soon to the US, and we see the first mobile Starlink system installed on a Tesla vehicle. So let's get going. Tesla has been hard at work over the holiday season, pushing software updates and new features to the fleet of vehicles. And this is probably the most significant software improvement that we've ever seen from the company. Lightshow is a pretty obvious scene stealer. This is a function that was introduced to the Model X a couple of years back, but now the rest of the Tesla crew can get in on the action. Of course, us non-X owners don't have fully automated doors that dance along, but we do get some really cool flashing lights. And if you have a car made within the last year, then the headlights can project out the word Tesla onto a wall in front of the car. It's a neat trick that we'll probably use once or twice and then forget about, but still much appreciated. If you wanna go a step further, you can even design your own version of the light show with a moderate amount of tech savviness. Check out this Twitter thread from the Cybertruck guy for details on how to customize your light show. And you can now also use your Tesla as a megaphone. This is along the same lines as that Sentry mode update that allows you to speak through your car via the Tesla app on your phone. Now with the megaphone update, you can broadcast your voice through the car's external speaker while driving. I'm sure that won't lead to any problems at all and everyone will use the feature very respectfully. We can get into some more practical improvements with a more customizable and simplified display screen and control layout. You can drag and drop your favorite apps onto the bottom menu bar and rearrange the menu bar icons however you like. Basically, just like on a smartphone. Automatic blind spot camera has finally arrived. Now when you activate a turn signal, the screen will pop up the camera view of the corresponding blind spot. It's a feature that's been in other cars for years and is nice to finally see in a Tesla. Waypoints. The one thing that everyone has been asking for since the dawn of in-car navigation in Tesla vehicles, waypoints are finally here. Now you can easily reorder or add multiple destinations to your route with updated arrival times. Sonic the Hedgehog is also now available on the Tesla Arcade. It's a ported version of the original Sonic game that launched for the Sega Genesis back in the day, however long ago that was. I just remember seeing Sonic for the first time at my aunt's house and having my mind blown that a video game could look so amazing. Ah, simpler times. Here's a nice one for those of us who live in cold weather climates. You can now preheat the cabin of your Tesla even with a low battery charge. It obviously still stops you from doing it with extremely low battery, but if you know it's just a short trip, then you don't have to freeze on the way there, which is very nice. On top of that, front seat heaters in Tesla vehicles are now automatic. So if you have the HVAC in auto, you can also have your seat temperature regulated as well. That's about it for the big changes, but there are a ton of little improvements that just make the UI even nicer than it was before, and it was already by far the best of any vehicle-based system. At the same time as we're getting all of these great new upgrades, we also learn that Tesla has made the decision to roll back one of their more controversial features, which is of course, in-car gaming while driving, also known as passenger play. This all started up on December 8th when the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration released a statement that they were bringing their attention to Tesla's in-car gaming system, which allowed for gameplay while the car was in motion. The intention for the feature is to be used by the passenger only, but admittedly there was no real safeguard in place to restrict that usage. You just tap on a dialog box. Anyways, back on December 8th, the NHTSA said that they were, quote, discussing the feature with the manufacturer. They also said some other things about how safety is essential to their mission and distractions in cars are bad. But that all escalated big time on December the 22nd when the NHTSA announced that they were opening a formal investigation on 580,000 Teslas that were sold since 2017 
over the vehicle's ability to run games on their infotainment system. Though specifically, the investigation would be centered around passenger play, a feature that has only been available since December of 2020. It was part of last year's holiday update. Not that any of this particularly matters anymore, because a day later, on December the 23rd, Tesla announced that they had just gone ahead and switched off the feature in question, which forced the NHTSA to turn around and issue this new statement on the matter, saying, quote, following the opening of a preliminary evaluation of Tesla's passenger play, Tesla informed the agency that it is changing the functionality of this feature in a new software update. Passenger play will now be locked and unusable when the vehicle is in motion. The agency maintains regular discussion with all manufacturers to discuss potential safety concerns of these systems, including Tesla's response to our concerns about this feature, end quote. So I guess that's that. Did we learn anything here? I'm not entirely sure. We've got news that as of December 22nd, Tesla has submitted all of the required documents for the German state of Brandenburg to approve the operation and production of electric vehicles at Gigafactory Berlin. The Environment Ministry of the German state of Brandenburg announced that it had received the necessary documentation from Tesla and any relevant agency. What does that mean? Well, it's good news in the sense that progress is continuing to move forward. Any reports that doesn't involve a pause or setback when it comes to the process at Giga Berlin is a big positive for Tesla. But at the same time, we did have high hopes that some production activity would pick up at the factory before the end of 2021. And that's clearly not going to be the case, which is very disappointing. If all of the necessary paperwork is now in the hands of the German government, then I think we can expect this to be the final hurdle, just waiting for them to review and grant approval. But we shouldn't have any illusion that this is something that will happen quickly. That's just not the German way. The most we've really got at the moment is one short comment from Brandenburg Minister President Dietmar Wojtek, who said a decision might come in early 2022. It's hard not to get discouraged with the revolving door of hopeful targets followed by administrative setbacks. We went from summer 2021 production to fall to winter to by the end of the year, and now we are on to early 2022. But each time, we do get the sense that there is less and less remaining for Tesla to overcome, and now it seems at least that we've reached the final boss, the German government themselves. We'll keep you updated though on how that works out and hopefully this will finally be the last update on this before it is actually operational. We've got a rumor here that Tesla might have a new battery partner to bring LFP cell manufacturing to the United States for the first time. Chinese battery cell manufacturer Goshen High Tech has reportedly signed an agreement for the supply of LFP batteries and the possibility of building a manufacturing plant in the US with a big public American automaker. Goshen did not disclose the name of the customer, but there are speculations that it could be Tesla. According to the terms of the agreement, LFP battery cell deliveries will take place between 2023 and 2028 and include a total volume of at least 200 gigawatt hours of battery capacity. Goshen will manufacture iron phosphate batteries in China and export them to the supposed customer in the United States. In addition, the partners will also plan to localize the production and supply of LFP batteries in the US and explore the possibility of a joint venture in the future. While the contract clearly calls for a joint venture, Goshen did not provide further details on it. We know that as of right now, Tesla are the only US automaker who are using LFP or lithium iron phosphate batteries in their vehicles. They recently switched the base Model 3 over to these cells in America and have been using them for years now on the Model 3 and now the Model Y in China. LFP batteries have significantly lower energy density than nickel-based cells, but Tesla is able to make them work due to the high efficiency of the company's drivetrain and electrical system. It's hard to imagine any other EV maker based in the United States being able to realistically make use of LFP batteries as they are still lagging pretty far behind Tesla 
in terms of efficiency. GM, for example, uses much bigger battery packs and still manages to get less range in their vehicles than Tesla. Another clue from Goshen High Tech comes when the company said it will supply battery cells for use in electric vehicles and other products of the company. And as we talk about often on the channel, Tesla is the only automaker that uses their battery cell inventory for other projects outside of just building cars, like energy storage products at the house scale and the grid scale. And we know that Tesla intends to use only LFP-based cells for these energy storage packs going forward. So it's looking more than likely that this partnership with Goshen High Tech is going to be Tesla's solution for bringing LFP battery manufacturing stateside to supply Model 3 production at Fremont and the new Megapack factory currently under construction. Next up is our first look at the SpaceX Starlink internet system at work in a moving Tesla vehicle. Now, unfortunately, this is not an official Starlink and Tesla integration. It's just a kind of wonky looking homemade project from some dude in Western Australia, but it's still a very cool demonstration of what this satellite internet system is capable of in these early days. Harold Murphy shared on Twitter that he had hooked a Starlink dish antenna onto his Tesla Model X to access the satellite internet network while on the road. Harold tested how far from his service address he could use the internet and was able to receive data within a 40 kilometer or 25 mile radius from his home address. He also posted on Twitter about the download performance he was able to achieve while driving, writing, 200 megabits per second from a SpaceX Starlink terminal mounted to a Tesla Model X while driving down the freeway at 100 kilometers per hour. Can't wait for full Starlink roaming ability, which was enough to get the attention of Elon Musk himself, who replied with the tweet, a lot of improvement still coming just from software updates to satellites and terminals. And further down in the tweet thread, Harold confirmed that the latency time was also unaffected while driving, maintaining the same 70 millisecond rate that he measured while at home. Obviously, Starlink receiver dishes are not coming to production Tesla vehicles anytime soon, but it does look like the next step is going to be moving the satellite internet service to airplanes. Back in October, Elon tweeted that SpaceX were in talks with airlines about Starlink integration for in-flight Wi-Fi adding, please let them know if you want it on your airliner, low latency and half gigabyte connectivity in the air. Then again, on December 20th, Elon replied to a tweet that said, airplane Wi-Fi is God's way of showing the youngins what dial up was like. Elon again said, true, ask your airline for Starlink. I'm not sure how exactly you do that. Maybe there's a feedback card you can fill out. Either way, it's worth a shot and the sooner the better. For more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up. It's theteslaspace.com. And make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. As always, if you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.